Yes, Good Shepherd Sunday, World Vocation Sunday, whatever you want to call it, a good, great day to pray for an increase in all vocations, not just priesthood or religious life, but that everyone finds their vocation, their calling. And if you sit here, let me say, well, I've found my vocation, I'm married, I'm a priest, religious sister, I'm on my way, I'm engaged, something like that, that's beautiful. God bless you, and thanks be to God that you, that you found that. But our initial vocation, our, our primary vocation, if you will, is called the universal call of holiness. And that word vocation comes from just the word, the, the Latin word, vocare, meaning to call. It's, it's just call. What's God calling you to? What's he inviting you towards? And through our baptism, everyone here, baptized and brought into the church. Some in continuing in a remarkable way. We had beautiful we had first communion this day. It was such a, a blessing to be able to see all these first these second graders receive first communion for the first time. And through our baptism we have this this call to be holy. It's called to be with God. It's above being married or a priest or a career. It's this call to be holy. It's called to be with and there's really two aspects of holiness that we're called into. One is that we're called away from something, namely the world, namely the way the world wants us to live, and consumerism, materialism, skepticism, relativism, all those isms that the world wants us to be bound, bound up with and concerned with. So a call to be separated from that, but then have a call to be firm, uh, be, to be firm in something else, firmness. And that firmness is to be called in, 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 in fir firmed up in God. And so you can see that when you have, when you when you're entering your vocation, you know, marriage, you're called to be separated from, you know, your your family in a way, and to be firm in that in those vows you make in front of God and people on the altar. The, 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 the words. Genesis, you know, a man is called to be to leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the wife to her husband. The priest is called to be separated from the world, to be whole apart, to be chosen for something to be completely unique in giving his whole life to God. Separated from what he was doing, and he had a career before that, like myself, from the, from the world, called out from the world. And Call to be firm in something else. And the promises that he makes at his ordination, right? A promise to pray, a promise to be obedient to his bishop and to all the successor bishops. A call to live simply, a call to conform himself to Christ. So firmness and separation. And this is something that we can live even if we're not in our in our set location. Here. Call our call to be separated from the world and be firm in Christ through our baptisms. So any condition or any, any circumstance, you can live this universal call to holiness. This is something that the, the Second Baptist Council made very clear. It's not just priests and nuns that are called to be holy, not just the popes, but everyone. From the, from the, the moment of your baptism to your last your last breath, you are called to be holy. And if you're working on this, if you're living a holy life, if you're striving towards holiness, not being perfect in every single moment, there's only one person who did that, that was Mary. If you're striving towards holiness, then I believe your vocation is going to come up from that. And if you're living your vocation, you continue on that road of holiness. And when you're living that holy life, living that will of God, praying and doing what He is, and doing what He tells you, what He wants you to do, be close to Him. You look on your left, you look on your right, you see who's coming, who's running with you. Maybe it's your future spouse, maybe it's brother priests, maybe it's uh, religious sisters, or other people who are dedicated to the Lord. You, you see who's, who's running with you, who's with you, who's striving to live this holy life with you. And then may your call be in communion with them in a more deep way. 
and then live out that holiness with them. I firmly believe in discernment and action. So this word discernment often goes to vocation. I'm discerning my vocation. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to move towards a more solid state in life. I'm trying to find this firmness. And there's a paralysis that can come with this. I think especially in my generation, the millennial generation, of I need to have it perfectly figured out and God's going to tell me exactly what to do and it's going to be crystal clear. It's going to be, you know, the, the burning bush will appear to me and until that happens, I'm not going to move a muscle. I think that's a mistake. I think that's, not, it's not to say that God is not very much involved with your vocation. He is. The call comes from Him. But we live out life. We do the life. We are living holiness and when we're doing that, that's when the call comes. We're, we're trying it out. That's what engagement is, that's what dating is, that's what seminary is, that's what the postulacy of the Michigan is. Right? It's you're not you don't enter into right anything, boom, right off the bat. You are, you know, a priest, you are married, you're a religious sister. You have a wise old priest in London, you know, his, he says, relax, you're not being ordained today. And it's true, right? There's there's a there's a process of learning how to live your life in, in every dimension. That's why the Good Shepherd Sunday, I think, is, is so beautiful that we really use this time to reflect on vocations, to pray for our vocations, whether for ourselves or for, for others, for increasing knowing our vocation in the church. So in this, this, this image of, of the sheep and the shepherds, one, I think it's very, it's, it's great that he uses sheep for, for us, for humans. Sheep are kind of dumb. Have you ever been around sheep? There was a, a video that was going around uh, on social media this last week of a shepherd pulling a sheep out of the crevice. What, like, what, the sheep is wedged in there. He used to use like a, a rope to pull out the sheep. Pulls them out, gets them ready to go. The sheep ju jumps, 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 trots off, takes a big leap, and lands right in the same crevice right again. It could not be the more, more perfect analogy for, 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 for sin, for, for how we live. And we try so hard for living this life and and, and then we end up right, right where we were before. But the old able to pull out again. But this going into the sheepfold, right, the, the idea of when Jesus says, my sheep know me, they hear my voice, they follow me. So at night, a lot of times the shepherds would, would leave their sheep in the sheepfolds with, with, with the last one or two. And he would come back at, at, at dawn in order to, to get his sheep. But there'd be multiple sheep in this, you know, sheep, multiple shepherds would use the same sheep full at night with the same watchman, and they'd come back at dawn and bring their sheep to bring them off into the fields to feed and be, and then be, be protected by the shepherd. But it would be important that those sheep would know his voice. So even though the sheep weren't necessarily the brightest of animals, they still knew the shepherd's voice. And he would come into the sheep fold, he'd call them, and they would, they would follow him. Right, there's all these voices in the air. We know this. Things calling out to us left and right. And it's, it's the ability to hone in on the voice of our shepherd, our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, to bring us, to bring us out, to know his voice, to know where we're, we're called. But it's not an anxious way. The sheep aren't, you know, ner nervous while they're waiting for the shepherd to, to return at dawn. Right? It's, they're, they're, they, know they're, they know they're safe, and they know they're secure, and, and, and Christ comes and pulls them out. He knows us. Our good shepherd knows us. He's not a dream smasher. That's another thing that comes with discerning vocations. God's going to call me to something that I, I'm terrified to do. I have no idea if I can do it, that I don't want to do. He's not someone who's going to smash dreams. That's, that's not our God. He's not going to call us into something that's going to make us absolutely miserable. It's a call into something that you can't even imagine. It, it is a call into something deeper. You know, if you were to, were to go back and see and, and be able to tell yourself, you know, 20 years after you, you made this decision, you entered this vocation, you followed this call, you know, what your life would have, what your life turned out to be, it's often, of course, very different. And if you're following that, calling from God, you're you're following that call to holiness, and, and God calls you out to do something specific. You're going to realize that it is something 
way better than you can imagine, way better than you could plan for yourself. I've only been in seminary for four years, we got two more, and it really is amazing just these four years, all the things that God has allowed me to experience and see and participate in. His internship uh, has been great, I'm so glad it's not my last day, or maybe worry, I don't know, it's up to you, but it's better than I could have imagined. Or the things that I've been doing in seminary, I could not have planned this out. Right? My plans I, I saw were boring. They were they were kind of a kind of drag. I was relying on myself to, to do it and they were boring. I've been able to go to Guatemala. I've been able to, you know, be, be with people, you know, as they end their lives, be, be, in, be with children at their baptism. Right? First communion yesterday. It's just beautiful that I could not have planned this out at the beginning of my seminary experience, even in college, even in high school, you know, what, what, what are you going to be? You know, I think I'm going to go work on planes. Well, that's good. But God's, God's called me out. You, there's something better. And this is for all. This is not just for me. This is not just for men who are called to be priests or women who are called to be religious sisters. This is for all of us. We all have this exciting call, or we're living out this exciting call, that God has for us. And it's always coming, it always comes back to that firmness, that, that separation, to be with Christ, to, to be firm in Him, and live that out. And whether that's what we found already, or whether that's something that is on the horizon for us, there's an excitement to it. There's a, there's a, there's a true beauty in finding that call to something that beyond what you thought was, was possible. So use this day to think of the ways you're striving for holiness, the ways that we can be better. Well, look and see, and see where your firmness is. See where, see what you're, see if you have been separated from something, which you have by your baptism. See where your firmness is. Use this day to pray about that and to pray for vocations. If there's an increase in all vocations, married, priesthood, religious life, and all of those are increase in the most beautiful way and realize in the most beautiful way so that we, we, we may all find our firmness and our love and our truth in the Good Shepherd.